Um, all right, moving on. Uh, born and raised in Calgary, our eighth speaker is a museum professional, Sikh Canadian, and woman of color. She values diversity and inclusion in her museum practice, and in she is here to be heard. Give a warm welcome to Harpreet Denjal. breath and we'll get started. <laughs> so when I was first asked to do this, uh, my initial instinct was to say no. Uh, this is making me very uncomfortable. And, um, but the past year, I've been spending time leaning into that comfort, discomfort and doing more things that, are, that I find uncomfortable. And this is an important topic to me to be discussing tonight. Uh, I'm born and raised in Canada, right here in Calgary, in fact. Um, and it slowly became apparent to me while I was growing up that the color of my skin mattered. Um, it was, uh, people saw me differently and that started to impact how I was showing up and, and how I would react. This is a picture of me at my birthday just earlier this year. Uh, <laughs> that's me in the middle opening up a book I love to read. Uh, I don't remember a lot about this day other than it was, you know, your typical birthday. You had a, you play games, you have a lot of fun, you eat cake. Um, soon after this picture was taken, we ended up at Prairie Winds Park in the Northeast. Uh, and, and the biggest memory I have for that moment, for that day, is that I was standing there, I was playing with my friends, and this boy rides bike, a uh, bike on a bike, um, and yells out the word "packy." I was confused and I was hurt, but most of all, I remember feeling that there's something wrong with me, that I had done something wrong, and I didn't understand why. I'm very fortunate, and I use that word, recognizing the irony of it, that that. Those forms of racism were few and far between in my life. Um, the racism I mostly faced was in the form of microaggressions. Those things that we see, uh, sorry, that we see, uh, sorry, say or do that aren't meant to be, either intentionally or unintentionally, are harmful. Things like asking me, where are you from? But no, where are you really from? Or, wow, your English is so good. These are things um, that uh, made an impact. Uh, I'd like to do a quick exercise if, with everyone. If you could please just close your eyes for a moment. And I'd like you to think about the first time you saw yourself represented in literature. What was that book and how old were you? I was 18. I remember the first time I saw an Indian character in a film. Finding out just a few years ago is an actually a man in brown, brown face. Um, remember the first time I heard popular music that had uh, Indian influences, and I remember the first time I visited a museum that uh, represented my people and my culture. Museums are important to this story today because I am a museum professional. I ended up here by accident. I don't have huge stories about being inspired by being at a museum. I went to these places because I was interested in the history, but I, was, I didn't go there because I saw myself in these places. There was no connection for me. These were places where I went to learn about other people, where other people were represented. So it's funny that I find myself in an industry now where uh, there is not a lot of diversity, and it becomes more and more apparent to me as we, as you know, I spend more time in this industry. Uh, I was at an industry conference earlier this year where I was invited to speak on diversity and inclusion. Um, and I was, uh, the, the um, sponsor, uh, sorry, the conference organizers were able to find the money to actually make it possible for me to be there. This is an, uh, part of an image that an artist drew that first morning of 150 people in the room of what they were seeing and, and hearing in the room. And the lack of diversity is very clear. This made me very uncomfortable because most of my life I've been put in this box, woman of color. Am I at this table because I belong here or because I check a box? And over time, for this past year especially, I've decided that I'm not gonna be defined by that box anymore. If I'm at the table, it's going to matter. Because exclusion sucks. And it especially sucks when we blame it, the exclusion on the, on the folks that are being excluded, which is what happens a lot. We don't think about how we can change our practice or what we're doing. We think about why are those people not coming? Why are they not participating? Um, 
One of my friends runs a Latina Psy Girls camp in the States. She asked her girls earlier this season, that, uh, what does it mean to be represented? One of the girls replied with, to be worthy. Whose stories are we worth telling? And whose voices are worth representing in these spaces? Not just cultural institution, but in all areas. My dad is not a huge fan of uh, cultural institutions or museums. He actually has never been to my workplace, even though I give him, it would cost him nothing to come and see one of my programs. <laughs> he has been to the military museums, though. Earlier this year, the military museums held a temporary exhibit on Sikh history in, in, the, in the Canadian military. Radical inclusion is not impossible, and it shouldn't be thought of as radical. Earlier this year, I saw a traveling exhibit in Halifax called Family Bonds and uh, Bonding. And it was the first time that I saw, and it didn't, even, it didn't even occur to me until I was there, that this was actually the first time I was seeing myself, my stories, my people represented in a cultural institution. The Royal BC Museum created this exhibit. They, when you go to their website, you can see that there is a very clear lack of diversity in their, in their uh, staff as well. But what is it that they're doing different? That, that it could have an impact on me. They're building, they're spending a lot of time, resources, and, and money in building relationships within the community. They are not ta going into communities and saying, oh, we would like you to join us in this. They're actually spending time learning from them what they would like to talk about. So I was asked one time, we put out job postings, no diverse people from diverse backgrounds apply. What is the answer? And I don't know if this is the answer, but I think part of the answer is you actually include those communities. And not just when it benefits us, but when um, it can benefit them as well. So this past year, I learned that even though my voice had been silenced, and even though it makes me uncomfortable to talk about this, that I'm not going to be silent anymore. Because my inaction means that I'm not, even, even through my inaction, it means that I'm not I'm making the problem worse. So I'm here to say, count me in, and I want to have a conversation about this.